Okay, yesterday we graphed quadratic equations. Today we actually want to solve the, those equations by graphing. Okay, we solved quadratic equations last chapter, and if you remember, every time we solved quadratic equations, we had to factor, and then after we factored, well, even before we factored, we wanted our equation equal to what? If you remember, we always wanted it equal to zero. Okay, same thing here. We wanted it equal to zero before we solve by graphing. Okay, because if I have it equal to zero, if I set y equal to zero, what will that tell me about my graph? What will that give me um, when I solve for x? If you think about it, going back to last year, when y is zero, those are your x-intercepts. When y is zero, it'll give you your x-intercepts. So what we want to look for is when the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, and our graphs could end up in different spots uh, along our coordinate plane. So if we take a look here, our graphs could go through the x-axis twice, right? Our, par our parabolas um, in this first case. So if you look at that, it goes through, it crosses it twice, so I'd actually have two answers. I'd have an answer here and an answer there. x would equal two different things. Um, and that's when it, it, you have two x-intercepts with your parabola. When we have one solution, that's when our vertex lies right on the x-axis because that's the only spot it really crosses it. I mean, it doesn't technically cross, but it's on the x-axis, so it's still an x-intercept. It's still a solution. And also your parabola could be completely above the x-axis or completely below the x-axis. And that we would say there's no real solutions. There are, there are no solutions because when y equals 0, there is no x. Our graph does not cross the x-axis. And the book will refer to these as roots sometime, roots. And roots are just our solutions of a quadratic equation. So the roots are where our quadratics cross the x-axis. So that's all we're looking for. We're going to graph, we're going to look, take a look and find out where the x-intercepts are, basically when our equation equals zero, um, and find what those x-values are. So let's get into it here. I'm going to do three different examples. Each one, one of them have two solutions, one will have one solution, one will have no solutions. Um, we're going to do them all the same way. Remember, we start off by finding the axis of symmetry by using x equals negative b over 2a. And I'll solve for that. I'll plug in my b, so negative negative 3 over 2 times a, which is a is an imaginary 1 here, so 2 times 1. And I simplify that. So I got a positive 3 over 2. And I'll just leave it as that. And then I need to find my y value of my vertex. So I need to plug that 3 over 2 in for x. So to find my y, and I'm just changing my 0 to a y for now um, while I'm graphing. So y equals 3 over 2 squared minus 3 times 3 over 2 minus 10. And we simplify, and so I get 9 fourths minus 9 halves minus 10. And we can type that all into a calculator or, or turn them into decimals if we'd like to. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, and so we end up with negative 9 fourths minus 10, which is negative 12 and 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my vertex. So 3 over 2, or I could say 1.5. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to use 1.5 instead now. And my y value, which was negative 12 and a fourth, or negative 12.25. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that vertex. I'm going to change. I'm going to count by twos um, instead on, on my y value. So I'm going to count by ones on the x's. And I'm going to count by twos. So I'll say in red so you can see it, 2 going up and negative 2 going down. So I got 1.5 down negative 12.25. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So we're about somewhere in there for my vertex. And remember we want to make our table now. Our vertex would be right in the middle 
and we got negative 12.25. And I picked two points to the left of the, uh, our, our x value for our vertex and two points to the right. I'm gonna, I don't want to work with decimals anymore. Um, so I'm going to pick 1 and 0 to the left of it. Well, if I pick 1 and 0, I've got to pick the same distance away. So if I look, that 1 is 0.5 away. So I've got to go 0.5 away in the other direction. So I'll pick 2. And the next one is 1.5 away. The 0 is 1.5 away. So I've got to go 1.5 away from 1.5 here to give me 3. Because I want to be symmetrical, right? Use that same distance. So plug it in. 0 is nice and easy. Um, if I plug in 0... That just makes the x squared 0 um, minus 3x. Well, that'll be 0 because 3 times 0 is 0 minus 10. So y is negative 10. And if I know that's negative 10, I know this is negative 10. And then I'll plug in 1 for x. So x squared is 1 minus 3 times 1 is 3 minus 10. So we get... 1 minus 13, which is negative 12. So I go ahead and graph my other points. So 0, negative 10, 1, negative 12, and then I got 2, negative 12, and 3, negative 10. And now we've drawn our curve here. So I start from the vertex, it's going to curve up and go on forever, our parabola. It should look symmetrical. should look symmetrical. And so now we'll take our best guess on what our solutions are. So our solutions are our roots. So if I look at that's a root, that's a root. It's where it crosses your x-axis. So the solution here is going to be x equals something. So if I look, I got x equals negative 3, and I got x equals 5. I don't really know if that's exact. It's, it all depends on how I drew my graph. I'm hoping I drew my graph pretty well. Um, but I can always check. I can always check. If you remember going back to last chapter, what we did was we factored to solve, right? We factored to solve. So I could factor this into a product of two binomials. And factors a negative 10 that add up to negative 3 would be negative 5 and positive 3. So x equals negative 3 and 5. So I was right. It worked out. x equals negative 3 and 5. So that's one way to do it. I can always factor it to check. Okay, But today we want to graph um, to find our, our roots, our solutions. Okay, So same thing. Except for here, I want this thing equal to 0, don't I? So i got to add 16 to both sides. There we go. Now we'll find our vertex um, and go ahead and graph. So x equals negative b over 2a. So we plug in negative b, negative 8 over 2 times 1. So I got negative 4. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that back in to find my y. Where I just changed 0 to y here. So negative 4 squared, which is 16, plus 8 times negative 4, which is negative 32, plus 16. Well, it looks like my y is going to be 0. So there's my vertex. Negative 4, 0. So negative 4, 0. Well, I already know I'm only going to have one solution because my vertex is right on the x-axis. But I'm going to go ahead and finish out my graph in my table. So negative 4, 0. So I'll pick two points left and two points to the right that are the same distance away. So I'll go with I'll go with negative 1 and 0 here. So I'm going to pick 3 away and 4 away. So negative 7 and negative 8. So they just have to be the same distance away. So it's symmetrical. Uh, plug it in 0. I like doing that because it's nice and easy. So when x equals 0, it's 0 plus 0 plus 16. And we get 16. If I plug in negative 1, so that means negative 8 is also 16. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 plus 8 times negative 1. Negative 8 plus 16. So I end up with 9. Y equals 9. 
So I know that's 9, which means that has to be 9. So I can go ahead and graph those. Negative 1, 9. 0, 16 is going to be way up top, somewhere way up there. Negative 7, 9. And way up top up there. So there's my parabola. And I already know I only have one solution because it's right on the x-axis. So my solution is x equals negative 4. That would be my solution. And if I factored it, if I factored this right here, I see that's a perfect square trinomial. And that would factor into x plus 4 squared. So I know that x equals negative 4. Okay, so I can always check that. But yeah, when it falls on the x-axis, one solution. My last one, this would fall, this would not cross the x-axis at all. Um, so if I quickly, I'm just going to quickly give an estimate of where this, this one ends up about here. Nope, I left. I think it's on the other side. Ends up about right here. Okay, and if I look, it does not cross the x-axis at all. So that ends up being no real solution, or no solutions is fine. I'm okay either way. There are no solutions because it does not cross the x-axis. Okay, and I won't take the time to go through that because I want to look at one more thing here. Let's say I graph and I don't have integral roots. Okay, I don't have integers. I don't have integers for my roots. So that means it's going to be some decimal. I want to just take my best estimate to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find that vertex. So I'll find the axis of symmetry. x equals negative b over 2a. So negative negative 4 is a positive 4 over 2 times 1. So I got 2. And let's solve for the y. Change that 0 to a y. Plug in your 2 in for x. So 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 2. And we end up with negative 2, negative 2. So there's my vertex, 2, negative 2. We'll go ahead and graph that, 2, negative 2. So I got my vertex. Let's make our table. So I know my negative 2, or 2 I'm going to use for my x value. Two points to the left, two points to the right, the same distance away. Plug in 0 and 1 are nice and easy. If I plug in 0, uh, 0 minus 0 plus 2, which is 2. So that means the 4 has also got to be 2. I'm going to graph those right away. 4, 2. Yeah, I don't even have to really do the next two points. I can already see where this is going, but finish it off. x equals 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus 4 times 1. Plus 2. So I got y equals negative 1. 1, negative 1, and 3, negative 1. Draw in your parabola. So if you notice, my roots now are not integers. So I'm just going to take my best guess. Um, this first one looks about 0. 0.6. It's a little over halfway um, to the one on the x-axis. X so I'll say 0. 0.6. The next one, 1, 2, 3. It's between 3 and 4. Um, looks about right in the middle, so I'll say x equals 0. 0.6 and 3.5. So you just kind of estimate to the nearest tenth. Estimate to the nearest tenth. Okay, that's all I got for you. You got 12 through 36 every three, so multiples of three. Um, good luck. Deuces.